life boiled it down to is a lot like Hunger Games mixed with the Tour de France, right, mixed man. with Trailblazing Through the Jungle, mixed with Zelda, mixed with a little game called Cannonball Jump. That sounds like one hell of an RPG. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? I know a lot of people are going back to school, but you know, school is different this year. And that actually means for us, we are not doing a lot of college shows, as in we're not going out to this university to speak and to do Q and A's and talk about uh, culture and media and all that stuff. So what we want to do in this video is actually tell you guys a lot of the stuff that we talk about in our presentation. Yeah, we actually have a PowerPoint yeah. that is exclusive for the universities and colleges that bring us out. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's all about life because I think that kids get a lot of knowledge coaching and they get a lot of skills coaching, mm -hmm. but in college, they actually don't receive a lot of framework coaching. Yeah, and frameworks to us, we're not here trying to give you advice. Frameworks are more a way, I guess, a framing for how you can view life and, and it helps you make decisions based on your situation because a lot of people when they ask us for advice and this goes for a lot of people if you s tell them some piece of advice that they don't want to hear they don't really soak it in i've seen gary v give so much advice to people where they're just like oh yeah you want me to just start working now what and that's not what you wanted to hear but guess what that's part of gary v's framework before we get into the first framework of life make sure to hit that like button click subscribe and turn on your notifications right now right there Oh, I'm excited for this one. Yeah, so let's talk about life. David, you have like a bunch of different kind of games, sports that you've rolled into one to describe life. Can you help make it make sense for people? Okay, you guys, at its core, life is a mixture of Hunger Games, okay, Human Cannonball, yeah. Tour de France, Jungle Trailblazing, and Zelda. That's a lot of games, man. And... There's a mountain that everybody's climbing. What? Mount Kilimanjaro. Mount success. Mount happiness. So let's start off part number one, Hunger Games. Basically, the concept of Hunger Games. Okay. People are coached from different sectors that have different resources, different coaching, but they're all just thrown. They're all preparing for this crazy like Olympic games that they're all about to enter. Yeah, so if you actually are born with, you know, a sperm and an egg, you actually are chosen for the Hunger Games. You know how some people are always like, yo, just be thankful you're alive because you could have been a sperm that didn't hit the egg. Right. That means that you were not even able to exist to be in the Hunger no, Games. No, a lot of sperms didn't make it. Yeah, a lot of sperms didn't even get chosen right. to be in the Hunger Games. Right. But here's the thing is, uh, instead of just being back in the village or the district, you're just not even alive. So that's why some people are like, yo, you should be super grateful. You're even got, you even got chosen to be in the games because you can't win the game or even enjoy the uh, roller coaster of life without existing. But in the macro sense, okay. we're all trained from different tribes. Okay. And to me, the district you're born into pretty much is like your family and your neighborhood and your environment up to like pretty much 17 years old. Would you say socioeconomic level to sum yeah. it all up? Not just your socioeconomic level, but your culture, your socioeconomic level. Okay. Basically, uh, your genetics, mm. things that you are not in control of is your district. Well, you mean like who your Like parents nobody in Hunger Games picked to be born into district nine. Yeah, or like one of the poor districts. Yeah, nobody gets chosen to be born into a, a very bad wealthy, district. Yeah, a wealthy family or a great neighborhood or educated parents or like tall parents. Being born short, healthy. Yeah, or short parents. Yeah, you don't get chosen. You don't get to choose whether you're born with disabilities or not. Yeah. Okay. But the crazy thing is you're all going to get thrown on the mountain at some point, despite what your coaching was and your resources. Mm -hmm. And that's why people are so concerned about trying to put their kids into like good school districts and making sure their kids are hanging out with the right crowd, right? Because that's... The train, you know, when they're yeah. all training, that's like the training. No, you're saying like it's like being born in a district and then automatically getting chosen to be in the Hunger Games. Yeah, I've seen wildly different socioeconomic levels and different cultures throughout my life, and I've seen the different coaching schemes that each one is taught, or even just the lack of coaching altogether. For example, for example, I've been in a lot of neighborhoods that are really nice, and I've been in the neighborhoods that are a lot of bad, and I've been in ones that are in the middle, like mixed. Right, okay. And let me just tell you this, the coaching that people receive, even at like seven years old, could be incredibly well, different. And you're saying coaching from, it could be parents, older brothers, cousins, the environment around them, mentors, or like their actual coaches and yeah. their teachers. Because certain teachers can be more helpful to students than others, yeah. even. 
I mean, basically, you know how everybody's always ranking in basketball. Oh, you play D1, you play D2, you play D3. That's already taking place at like a preschool level. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. If you went to a private elementary that costed $30,000 a year, it's, uh, that's generally considered a better system than if you went to a public school. We have some cousins that were raised in elite private schools in LA. Uh -huh. They were taking wealth management courses in seventh grade. It's different. I, different never styles, even, I didn't even hear about wealth management until I you still don't hear about pretty it. Pretty much moved <laughs> to New York, yeah. Until so, I met people who work in wealth management. So here's the thing. Everybody's coached differently in the district, right? And everybody like, sometimes you're coached in a district and you're aware that you're getting bad coaching. Sometimes you're coached in a district and you just think the way you got coached is the only yeah. way to be. Like I said, long story short, guys, in the Hunger Games, everybody just receives super different coaching. You can't control certain things, your genetics, the geography of where you're raised in, and geography provides, you know, opportunities. Mm -hmm. Then guess what, Andrew? Once you hit about 17 years old, the game turns into cannonball. You're going to get shot out of a cannon yeah. onto the mountain. Right. But here's the thing, Andrew. Different cannonballs get aimed differently. So not only is there the target, yeah. there's the target of where your tribe is trying to aim you. Right. Your district has, like, a certain philosophy about where to aim you. Okay. But there's a different success rate. Sometimes the cannon even might like just have failure and well, completely explode. Is it also because there's different people behind each cannon, aiming each cannon? Yeah, so and, it that, depends and on the that people. goes back to point one. Yeah, it depends on the people who are guiding the cannon. And then how are they loading it? What's, the, tra tra what's the trajectory? Are they testing what, the wind? What are the wind? Did they even take a look at the wind? Maybe it's a cloudy day. Yeah, so this is like when you're 17 years old. Right. This is the first time, you know, let's just make it 18 so it makes more sense to people legally. All right, you're 18. This is your first chance, Andrew, that you get some minor control over your life is at 18 years old. Generally, you start to be an adult. So you get to make Andrew, decisions. You're, you're shot at a certain trajectory, okay. altitude, velocity, the winds, blah, blah, blah. It's almost like shoot, hitting a golf ball in any of those golf video games. You know how you have to gauge everything when you, before you hit the golf ball in like Tiger yeah. Woods, whatever. And stuff. So you are that golf ball but you're being hit up a mountain. So you're going pew. So this is the first time a little bit, just like Crash Bandicoot or whatever game you, I mean, you know, I'm not saying kids play that game anymore. Fortnite, you know how you get dropped out of the, the it, it did matter where the ship dropped you, but then it mattered a little bit where you moved your parachute. Yeah. So you're now flying in the air, but you have a little bit of wiggle room about how you hit the mountain. This is when you're starting to make your own decisions. Who do I want to be around? What do I want to do? What do I like? What do I dislike? How am I spending my time and my effort and my attack power? Mm. You hit the mountain at a different point. Right. But here's the thing. The mountain is so big, you're already on a path based on where your district elders shot you. Let's just give the example of everybody that's Asian American. Majority of Asian Americans, Andrew, are coached a certain way by the district in Mount America we are shot on a proper corporate path to success. That's what the people behind the cannon are aiming for. And the people being usually our family, who's telling us, hey, get and educated. Community. And our community. And community. Get educated. Get a good job. Become a doctor, lawyer, professional, nurse, whatever. It could be a number of things. We're shooting you in that direction. Yeah. We are shooting you. Yeah. Yeah. And you kind of got this parachute. Okay. And you're being shot. And so you're, you're aiming a little shot, bit. You're like, Here's the thing, Andrew. So here you go. You hit the mountain. Okay. But guess what? When you land on the mountain, it's not just you with your legs. It's you on a vehicle. But the vehicle is a bicycle. But here's the thing. Not everybody has the same bicycle the second they hit the mountain. And some people land as a team and with a little bit of like radio help from back in the district. And some people just land with no radio help. Like we, it's like, imagine this is where the Tour de France element comes in. So if you guys know about the Tour de France, it's this crazy European like bike journey, right? And everybody has teams, right? But not everybody gets the same support. Some people have better teams. Some people have worse teams. Some people are taking drugs like Lance Armstrong. Right. Some people are just playing it straight up. Some people have expensive bikes. Some people have broken bikes. Some people yep. have get sabotaged. Some people have help from the crowd. Some people are getting Gatorade. Some people are getting water. There's a ton of variables in the Tour de France. Right. Let, let's just rewind real quick. Let me sum it up. Hunger Games. You get born into a district, but you get automatically put into the Hunger Games. Your elders and the people behind you, they shoot you into a cannon in which you start your Tour de France. Essentially, yes. So that is how you got... Just to, so people aren't confused, that's how you got from Hunger Games to Cannonball to Tour de France. Okay. And the Tour de France, of course, there's a lot of elements in the race. It can be raining, it can be cloudy. Uh, you can have a good team, bad team. You can yeah. have the cars behind you that but help you. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Okay. 
generally, because of the way America's set up, especially when you come from a strong immigrant group like being Asian, we are shot into a specific lane with bumper rails. Like all the Asian Americans are essentially, for the most part, shot into a same lane together. And there's almost like not that many other races in that lane. Like we just got shot onto our own side of the mountain. Yeah. You know what it is? It's a tour de France, but with different paths. Yeah. Whereas the tour de France tends to be more one similar yeah, path. But like, let's just say, for example, like, and this is unfortunate. I'm not saying this is how I want it to be, but it often plays out this way in America. Each race or district shot their kids for the most part onto a different side of the mountain. And sometimes the paths intersect with each other. But for the most part, like everybody in America, if you look at the major groups, they're sort of like on their own path, on their own tour de France. The bulk of people, Andrew, are going to stay on the path they initially got shot onto. Because they got shot onto that path. So there's these that. thick forest bumpers okay. that prevent you from hopping into the next lanes over. But it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. But it's tough. So here's the thing. You have options. The vast majority of people, I would say, end up playing the Tour de France route or pick the snowboarding route that they got put onto initially. Most I'm talking people. about white, yeah. black, Asian, Latino. Yeah. Most people in America, rich people, poor people, rich people, they're sort of yeah. like playing that like wealth management route, you know, old money. And uh, people whose parents really push them into sports, they're playing like, I'm trying to be a pro athlete route. Mm -hmm. And Asians, we mostly play that I'm trying to become STEM fields, right? Engineering, lawyer, business person. Right. Maybe small business owner, but not really. That's more of our parents. Yeah. And this is why we know this because you meet so many people who are like, hey, um, I was on the path to going to medical school or like I was working in finance for like five years and I quit and I really wanted to do something different. So I started a food truck. Like that's when they went off the path now. When you're Asian, Andrew, and you don't want to become a yappy, you don't want to become a corporate person, you have to now dredge through that forest and move over to other paths. A lot of times, I think a lot of Asians are mad. How come I didn't get born into District 3 and shot onto that path because I want to do entertainment, but now I'm going to school with kids who's like, they've been in entertainment for like three generations in their family. They got shot onto that path to begin with. And you're saying I got to cut over six yeah. lanes of like potentially treacherous forest and terrain to even get to that lane. Andrew, and not only when I get to that lane, maybe my bicycle was more built for my lane. So now not only do I have to go over to that lane, I have to stop and accumulate gold to upgrade my bicycle to even fit the terrain of the lane that I've swerved into. So do you see what I'm saying? That's why it's so uncommon for people to swerve out of the lane they've been born into because now they don't know if their bicycle tires are fit. They don't know if they've been got the coaching. They don't even want to even traverse the boundaries. So now it's so unlikely to the point where you have to be like a pretty extreme outlier, whether you were one of the Asians that got shot onto the, you know, one of the one out of every hundred Asians that gets shot onto the unorthodox path to begin with. It happens, mm -hmm. but it's rare. Uh-huh. Or you just were so ultra determined, you upgraded your bicycle, you shot through everything, you blah, 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 blah. Or you just happen to be maybe, for example, a rich Asian where you already had the gold, not that you didn't do the work, but you were already able to upgrade to the ATV bike to traverse mm. through the barriers. And that's why you see somebody, in my opinion, let's just use media as an example. All the Asians that are successful in media generally either have an apparent that's from America understands the West very deeply. So they kind of got shot onto the path or they're really rich where they, you know, they have the weapon tree to shoot through the forest. He's going up the, the mountain. Okay. Why is he taking, why is he going through the forest? Okay. What he's hanging on. He's, he's going through the forest trying to get into that path. Why? No, 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 they can't even see you at some point anymore. If you go over like five lanes over, he's stuck in the forest. We didn't come to this country just so he could get stuck in the forest. And then, wow, if you zoom into the forest, like do the little satellite imagery, which maybe only you could see. You're just going through and you're like, I'm sorry, mom and dad. We're going to disappoint you. I know you don't want me to chop through this forest, and, and, but I need to get to this other path. And you know what they're worried? They're worried that you're going to get eaten by one of the grizzly bears in those barrier zones. Well, they don't, they're not sure if you're going to make it. Obviously, if they knew in their mind that you were going to be successful and make them proud... And by success, I mean usually conventional success as in getting making good money in it and not doing some type of art that like totally embarrasses them. But otherwise, they just hope that you live a good life, but they don't know that you are. They think yeah. you're going to die in the forest over. But I'm saying I've seen other minorities do that too. But yeah, it definitely seems like uh, a large amount of Asians try to do that. And that's what a lot of the conversation within the Asian community is about right now. They're like, 
why do people want to just be white? Well, the truth is, if you really analyze it underneath this framework that I provided, the white path up the mountain and where they got shot from their cannibal is honestly completely and, different. And not all white paths. Yeah, but not all white paths. I'm sure Eminem's white path was like not the main one I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, not all white paths, but generally the mainstream white path in America is smoother than the other paths, which they, they, they've built it that way. And by the way, the reason that we came up with this analogy with the barriers and swerving, swer swerving into the media lane is because me and Andrew are people that were shot onto District 9 trail yeah. and swerved greatly. Mm -hmm. And we had to hit barrier after barrier after barrier. Yeah. But to be fair, YouTube is not as many barriers away. It might be like one or two barriers away versus Hollywood being like seven barriers away. Yeah. Like Hollywood's really on the other side of the mountain. We might just be like on the next path. So just to give you guys a better example, if you guys are not following us, to me, someone like Rice Gum, shout out to Rice Gum, to me, he didn't even get shot onto the District 9 side of the mountain ever. Like he's not from a conventional family is what I'm saying. Kudos to him because he got shot onto a wildly different side of the mountain and he was able to become successful. Shout out to him because I like seeing a young Asian make that much money. Sometimes when you're on the 60 to 200K District 9 typical path, you kind of like, and I'm not saying that people are wrong for this. You even might hate on people like us who have like swerved into other lanes. Because I always get that question for people that really stayed on the 60 to 200 mm -hmm. path. Hey, how much do you make? How much money do you make? How much money do you make? How much do you money make? Sure. And until I clearly like make over 200K a year as an individual, my swerving out of the path is not justified. So what do you tell them? I tell them some years and some years definitely not because that's the nature of our business. Is very up and down. And then what do they say? Oh, yeah. And then they feel more justified. They the think the swerving through the lanes is only worth it if you make over 200 k Why'd you cut through the forest then? You went through all that trouble just to make less than I do? I'm like, well, the whole point <laughs> of wanting to get to the different path is because I, do, I don't want to do what you do even if I made the I didn't amount. want to ride up this side of the mountain regardless. Yeah. That for us, we never have conversations about how we're so much better than the people who stayed on the path. That For is me true. personally. Because we have people personally. in our family yeah. that are very much on that path. Like, I hold nothing against them. Like, we actually have friends and made friends who are just regular guys, yeah. who just work regular jobs, whether they're business owners or they work in corporate, and we are legit friends with them. We see them out once in a while, and I'm just like, yeah, I feel no type of way, man. Like, if you're good at what you do, I respect it. Now that we've established, Andrew, and we, the reason we're providing you guys these analogies is because we often get brought out to speak about Asians blazing in the media. So I always tell people, uh, that's why we framed it that way. I'm sure it could be the same way for Asians who want to play sports, for Asians who want to do uh, enter politics, right. for Asians who want to enter like soft skill positions even within the corporate world. All those things are not STEM. The corporate path in America yeah. has been shown to be so lucrative for people with a little bit more balance between soft skills and hard skills. I think more parents are opening up to it. Yeah. Back when I was growing up, I'm born in the 80s, guys. It was even bad to go into business because at that time, business was so like, hey, Johnson, like, you know what I mean? And you weren't going to fit in with that Gordon oh. Gecko, Leonardo DiCaprio. You and, got those and, uh, TPE reports for me. Yeah, you weren't. Fung. Basically, there was a sense that Asians weren't going to fit into the Wolf of Wall Street life. But I think there have been enough rich Asians that have done the Wolf of Wall Street sort of like quant mathematics. Well, driven I also driven. think now that path that we're talking about, there's more Asian mentors and more. Uh, you just met more Asians who took that path and have. They can, they can, they can, lives, you can yeah. join on their project and they can yeah, yeah, yeah. fast track you up. Even if you get shot, let's say, for example, you're adopted. You're Asian. You got adopted by rich white people. So you get shot on a wildly different side of the mountain. Right. Sometimes. On the smoother path. The smoother, more fun. They got hot springs for rest stops. More developed path. Just like everything's nicer, right? Sure. Uh, it's the D1 school. You know how the kids who go to Duke, they got like. All these nice massage tables. Well, they get all the they, meals. They got, they stuff, got the yeah. pro stuff. They got the cryo chambers at Duke. You don't Very got the cryo yeah. chambers at, you know, Murray State. You got to get it out the mud. Uh, let's say you get shot onto that nice side of the mountain. Sometimes you get on such a good bicycle, Andrew, and there's so many hot springs and distractions up the way okay. that all you do is end up, you don't even climb the mountain. You just end up shooting from hot spring to hot spring, mm. rest stop to rest stop, partying. And that is where the Zelda comes into play. This was my final piece. I'm sorry it took so long to get to this point. Zelda comes into play because in Zelda, you have to go save the princess or find all the ocarinas of time or whatever, you know, the mission is for that, like, 
RPG. Yeah. But the thing is, there's so many mini games along the way that sometimes are even more fun and more quick release dopamine than actually like achieving the goal is. Some people, you could take like a hundred hours to finish a game that theoretically, if you're really focused, could only take like four hours true. to play. So basically, true, that's true, what's true. happening sort of on the western side of the mountain right now, or I guess the white party side of the mountain, whereas the kids get such a good pedal assist bicycle. Let's just say they get an onyx. They get a they get shot onto the mountain, pretty high up on the mountain, mid tier on an onyx, and sometimes they start going down the mountain because they're just like, oh yeah, they got a ratchet little rest yeah. stop, you know, like you know what I mean? Yeah. They're doing figure eights on the mountain, they're going right, up, right, they're going right, down, right. but without a concrete like desire to shoot up, right? Because the trappings of that mountain are so fun and dopamine releasing. Well, they get complacent. They get into a certain lifestyle. They become less ambitious. That is a lot of people. And you think a lot of kids who are born into some version of privilege, whether that's white or other minorities who are still born into really well-off families, they often become complacent too. Would you say like Tom Hanks' son, for example, born into a, a extreme wealth, is that thing the dad's worth hundreds of millions of dollars? Yeah. He tries to often talk like a Jamaican shata, you know, like... Bo mob boss. Yeah. Well, I, I like like it seems so ridiculous, right? Because you're like, who is this kid born in Hollywood royalty, and all he wants to do is be a Jamaican boss? Basically, what I'm saying is, I guess that's the one thing where parents they don't want you to even get distracted from the District Nine hard manual bike path because they're like, well, oh, what if you end up like one of the people who's just enjoying all the hot springs on the white side of the mountain? What if you? go to a different path and you get a tattoo. Ah! Oh, they're, they're just at this rest stop just getting tattoos and they don't even try to climb up the mountain with their legs anymore. But what if you don't get any more degrees at school? And what if you don't, you just stop your education here and then you just be happy. Ah! You're doing donuts on the electric cycle not just using it to go up to the next base camp. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think some parents are changing, but that is generally how a lot of them feel. Because, you know, they, they're they like, it took so much to shoot you out of that cannon. We came here. But Did I shoot you out of that cannon just so that you could go get stuck in the forest on your way to a different path? Well, they don't want you to, one, get stuck in the transition forests. And number two, once you get onto that other path, they don't even trust that path. They don't even know that they path. They don't know anything about it. Yeah. And you know, the funny thing is, one thing I've seen is that um, really wealthy people from Asia, like rich fathers, international students, they're yeah. not shot onto the District 9 path. And they can, they have so much money, they can hire like a helicopter to come drop them off relatively with some, a few restrictions on almost any path they want. But here's the thing you know, the funny thing is, there's certain paths like becoming like a pop star or a rock, a rap star, that no matter how much money you have, basically no matter if you're on the nicest Onyx bike possible, you can still mess up on that path because certain paths of the mountain are so difficult to achieve. Like soft power, it's not fully up to you. Even if your dad like owns like 7,000 coal mines in like whatever, like rule, whatever, you, you still actually like are potentially limited. The reason I always say everything is uphill is because the second you stop pedaling, you slide back. Yeah, you have to constantly work, right? Yeah. And I feel like this, it's like, to talk about the privileged, well-off kids who get to more or less choose their path, it doesn't mean that they're going to appreciate the ability to choose paths as much as someone who had to cut through the forest to get to a different path. So appreciation. That's why a lot, a lot of those people, once you make it through the forest and you're like, I'm on to the other path. Yo, let's do it. I'm ready. I'm fired up. I made it. So let's go. While sometimes the kids, if they take an airlift or they take the little ski lift over, they're just like, I chose this path. Well, okay, I'm glad I'm here. All right, well, let me just walk up here. Ooh, this is fun. I'm having fun. Oh, I got to keep walking. Ah, I'm getting tired. Oh, geez. Maybe I should just rest here for a second. Wow, the other guy who made it through the forest is just yeah. like, so let me go! just, and I always, uh, in entertainment, we always have this discussion. Let me get into this, and I always have my opinion on it. And I know the internet, if you're not, not immediate, it's Taylor Swift. So Taylor Swift still decided to enter a path where her wealth did help her 
it gave her the tools and it might have gave her a better radio and it might have airlifted a shot out of a cannon to a certain point. That's not an easy hill to climb, though, regardless. No, it wasn't easy what she did. It was not. She still had to be in attack mode, pumping her legs with that great bicycle she was given still nonstop. And I will tell you this. I've always been impressed that Taylor Swift and Beyonce as well, because Beyonce's parents really coached her to ride up that certain path and become a queen and things like mm-hmm. that. But they both have never let their legs stop pumping ever. We're not to take credit away from essentially rich kids who do the work and use the resources that they're given, use the, the equipment that they're given to t- ride up a path. When I'm saying this, I'm not saying this is in terms of absolutes. I know there's a lot of Asians that are born into poverty and then they got to run the district nine lane. I know there's all these things. I'm talking about bulk distribution on a chart like where the bulk of the uh, statistics are, not mm-hmm. the outliers on the high end or the low or, end. Or, I mean, dude, I mean, you could be Asian and uh, born into poverty and then shot onto a much different path, not even the STEM path. There's other paths that they shoot themselves on. Yeah, I knew people on, yeah. who's like, yeah, parents, parents were all like, types of stuff. Yeah. yeah, parents were into some different stuff and then that set them down yeah, a different yeah, path. Yeah. You know? I would, so, I'm referring more to the kids right. and that's who we were raised around primarily at church, yeah. not my school. Well, fi- funny I, enough, my middle school was full of kids yeah. that really had some tough backgrounds. But at yeah. church, when we went to a Chinese church on Sundays, almost like 95% of kids was really on that 60 to 200 District 9, just pump your legs with a manual bicycle yeah. path. So basically, guys, just to recap, life is a lot like the Hunger Games, then Cannonball, okay. then the Tour de France. And if you want to switch, then it becomes Jungle Trailblazing. And then even if you trailblaze to a new path... You got some Zelda choices to make. So like I said, Andrew, I read so many different analogies for life. Some people said it's like a plane ride, a train ride, a mountain hike, this, that, uh, a melody. Somebody said it's life like being a composer, making a melody. But at the end of the day, for me, and I believe at least people from our base camp, I think I came up with the most accurate way to describe it that I've heard. And you couldn't simplify it, reduce it to one game. You had to go Hunger Games to Cannonball, to Tour de France, to Jungle Trailblazing, to Zelda. So I guess just to give a quick uh, description, we are sort of like people who went on the path over. Well, I definitely cut through at least one or two forests. I can't say I'm the person who cut through like nine forests, Mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, Johnny Kim. The guy was an astronaut and a Navy SEAL sniper and a Navy SEAL medic. Yeah, yeah, that's... Like that was like, I don't even know. He he got a blowtorch or something because he'd be blown. He just... Destroying yeah, he barriers. He must drink like four Red Bulls every day. I don't know how much energy 40. he has. Yeah. yeah, and I'm sure he has a supercharged brain. But like, yeah, that is, as somebody who has it's cut life. through, past, yeah. that is life. And there's a reason why a lot of Asians become typical Asians. And there's a reason why typical people from any group that are born into a certain culture with a certain coaching from a certain socioeconomic class, from certain ideals and priorities, end up where they end up. Right. Because that's the bulk distribution of that archetype. And by the way, guys, this is what I mean by bulk distribution. Pop up a chart. I am talking about archetypically, stereotypically, people are referring to this bulk middle point. Mm. The the waistline, as they call it. The median, would you say? Median. Median. Median median and mean. I think the median and mean, which is the um, mathematical average, can differ sometimes. But oftentimes, they're kind of close, too. Yeah. So that's pretty much life. life in a nutshell. Now, basically, Andrew, what are the major questions that people get that we get when we provide this framework? Because I think this is the first time usually the kids have been exposed to it. But nobody, nobody really argues with it. I think sometimes you can argue over the details. You get like, all right, this is not a direct correlation with this. I'm like, dude, listen, talk about like comparisons here. You know, a lot of the it doesn't qu- really fully link up 100%. A lot of the questions at, at the schools are just like, hey, um, I want to start my TikTok career. I want to start a YouTube channel. What should I do? But I'm like already like second year in the STEM yeah, major. Or I'm thinking about changing my major to like visual arts or like a theater major. Um, but right now I'm like chemistry. And I'm like... All right. This is what I would generally say. One. Everybody who wants to cut through a forest, everybody should try cutting down a tree or two on one of the barriers. Why not? I know your parents are probably get mad. You know, they're coaching from down there with the binoculars. What are you doing? You even cutting a tree for like two minutes? You have a yeah. spoon. How can someone with a spoon cut through the trees? Right? I mean, yeah. 
But then at least you can more f- get back on the path and focus on running the District 9 race. Yeah. If you know you're not good at cutting through the forest. I agree. I, I generally think, at least in America, the way the Western society works, you got to, sometimes you got to know to know. Yeah. And people don't is, know things until they experience it. This is what I always tell people. I'm like, man, try it out on the side first because some people want to make this big shift in their brain. Like, oh, you know what? I just want to shift my my whole bike into this different lane. I'll run into the forest. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, you know, yeah, chop a few trees down. Try it out. Take some improv classes. Take some acting classes. Make some YouTube you mean videos. Like, you're talking about like take the after work class. Make 20 YouTube videos before you come ask me again. Like make or even 20. go to yeah like before you quit your corporate STEM job st- or STEM, STEM path B, yeah STEM B path to become a comedian why don't you sit and watch fifty hours of the best comedians go to at least fifty live shows and at least do fifty open mics with yeah. real feedback from real people and cold <laughs> email and cold message fifty comedians fifty comedians and email them they won't all get back to you like. A lot of people now, they want advice. And I'm sure this is the same thing that Gary Vee goes through, except obviously us on a different level. I'm not Gary Vee. But like a lot of people just want to hear a quick answer, a quick solution. Like, how do I do this? I'm like, you have to try it first and then find out if you're built for it. And then if you've realized you're built for it, then you forge ahead. Or if you've decided that even if you're not built for another path, you're just going to spend your life sort of toiling up that mountain and you're got a huge smile on your face, your Make serotonin, you dopamine, endorphins, whatever is releasing at a 10 out of 10 level every second of the day, regardless of what you're, you know, how far you make it up that side of the mountain. Yeah. Then so be it. Right. Because maybe, here's a big kicker, Andrew. Maybe getting to the top of the mountain is not the right path for everybody anyway. For certain people, chilling and spending their time, time at a rest stop or a hot spring or a summit somewhere in the mid-tier, upper mid-tier, lower mid-tier, that can also be the right choice, surprisingly. That could be the yeah. right choice for you. Right. I will say that Chinese culture, it tends to be a little bit like just about riding on a manual bicycle up like a really steep mountain. And I'm just like, regardless of whether you're smiling or not. And I understand that that's what's allowed Chinese culture to be what it is uh, over 5,000 years. Obviously, there's been an ebb and flow and up and down. But uh for myself, I, I I can't say I fully buy into that coaching. Yeah. <laughs> For me. Yeah. Man, if you're not even good at forging a path and you don't enjoy it, you shouldn't do it. Those are the two main things. If you can do it and if you want to do it. Some people just really want to do it. And like you said, they get such a great feeling and they're going to be happy from doing it. Then so be it. But if you're just doing it just because you want to be different, it's not going to be enough to cut through what you have to do. It's, it's not going to... It's not going to carry you through. Yeah, come to terms with how much you're in love with the process and how much you're in love with the results. Gotta love the process. But I think that sometimes, oftentimes, if you're a very philosophical person, when you get to the results, you kind of realize that maybe at least more than half was about the process. Basically, that's life. You guys, literally, that is life. Um, That's a presentation we would normally give at a school. Normally, there's a QA and a section. Why don't you leave the Q&A in the comments section below? I know we threw a lot of assets at you guys. I don't even know how this video is going to perform. I actually hope it goes viral. I hope it gets shared on IG and this and that. But um, that is the game broken down the best way I can in a compartmentalized, easy, digestible parts for you guys. And uh, some people are going to agree. Some people are not going to agree. Some people are going to be mixed. Let us know in the comments down below. All right, you guys, make sure you leave your comments. We will pin the best question. Give it a $25 Amazon gift card. I do this just because I can't speak to you guys. Believe me, normally the universities have us out, but uh, I just feel like the knowledge has got to be out there. All right, you guys, please let us know what you thought in the comment section below. Make sure you send this to your friend if your friend needs to hear it. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.